Hey, 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 you're now tuned in to Underdog Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Jones Jr., the underdog with the heroic heart, and I have conversations with successful underdogs. And today we have Mr. Jeremy Funderburg. I think that's how you say your last name. Yes, Is, did I say it? Okay. How are you doing today? I'm blessed, brother. Living in victory. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, it's actually warm here in Indianapolis today, so I was just sitting on the porch. So once we get done, I'm going to go probably sit back on the porch for a little bit, get some fresh air. So I hear that. It, it was just it was just freezing cold. You need your winter coat and everything um, Saturday. So we got <laughs> bipolar weather. Um, <laughs> But before we get into uh, our conversation, today's episode is brought to you by ChristianDewan.com or Christian Dewan Clothing, uh, positive energy through your clothes. We have clothes for babies, toddlers, youth, mom, dad, auntie, uncle, grandma, grandpa, whoever uh, needs either a shirt, a sweater or a hoodie. We got it for you. If you use the promo code Underdog Talk Podcast, you will get 15 percent off. And the website, again, is ChristianDewan.com. <clears throat> so my man, Jeremy, is uh, he's, he's a great marketer. He's, he's somebody that you have a conversation with him. He can give you some tips within five minutes that can really help you out. I'm not just saying this um, just off of knowing what he does. He actually, we had, I was on his podcast and he gave me some tips afterwards and it was like, wow. So before you got to doing instant scale media, what were you doing? What kind of person were you? What, you know, what was going on in life? Yeah, man, it's crazy. So before instant scale, I actually had another agency before that. Uh, Elite Minds Marketing, which is uh, a big marketing company in the real estate space, ran that with a partner until uh, he decided to go a different route. And then we, we left and now went full force in the instant scale. But uh, I'm an entrepreneur, man. I'm a, I'm a hustler. I'm a grinder. You know, I've never been the, the employee type. Did work in the corporate world for a while. They uh, became a million dollar producer. And right after I produced a million dollars for a company in three months, they want me to do it in a year. I did it in three months. They got excited. They do a celebration and end it by saying, hey, good job. We don't need you anymore. Packed all my stuff up in the box and told me to leave. So wow. entrepreneur from there. <laughs> wow. So with that, I, 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 I hate that that happened to you, but I love it because people don't get that when it comes to a job. Like not saying that you have to um everybody's not going to be an entrepreneur everybody's not going to have their own business anything of that sort but don't get so tied up in that nine to five that you have because like he said they expected you to make a million dollars in a year you made it in three months mm -hmm. like you made it quick like boom i got you like okay you i'm sure you was like okay i got y'all you know my goal real quick so what's the next step and the next step was the door and <laughs> That's 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 kind of mess. That's that's fucked up, man. Like that uh, the worst part was I just got married before that. So they do a celebration for me, say congrats on your marriage, and then let me go. Wow. Wow. I know. So when that happened, how were you feeling? Like what was going on? What what was going on with you like after that happened? Because I know even though you say you're an entrepreneur, just having that job and then you just getting married and then, you know, smack, there you go. So how, how did that go How for you personally? Yeah, it's crazy because uh, I had to find myself. You know, I'm Mr. Positive, always happy, always smiling. I can see the bright side of any situation. You know, something bad happens, I can see the bright side. That happened, I was, I was going to catch a case. <laughs> 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 like it, it, it took it took thankfully I have a very strong wife but man I, I I thought I was gonna do something I was gonna end up regretting but you know it was a blessing in disguise because I realized Jeremy they gave you this random list of people to call I made 120 to 127 cold calls every single day and I closed a million dollars in three months for someone else Jeremy, if you can do that for somebody else, you can do that for yourself. 
and that gave me the confidence I needed to to go into business for myself. Mm. I love it because the two things that really hit with what you just said, you had to find yourself, even though you're optimistic, you're a positive person, life punched, life gave you a two piece and a biscuit. <laughs> and you're like, okay, what the heck am I supposed to do? But you also said you have a strong wife and mm -hmm. you have to have, it. you don't necessarily have to be a wife, but it could be a business partner, whoever, Whoever is going with you when you're going up, they have to be strong just like you have to be strong for them because it could have been where, you know, your wife's like, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? Like, you just got fired. You know, I'm doing my job, but that takes the income that we were having. And it wasn't it wasn't like that for you guys. And then you realize, hold on, I just made somebody else a million. If I can do that for them, I'm sure I can do that for myself. So when you started like afterwards you got fired, you started going for yourself. How did that go? Did it go like, well, did, did you, you know, have some bumps or did, was it, you know, how did that go? Yeah. It's crazy. Cause that finding myself, it, it took a while to actually be able to find myself and build up that confidence. So my, my next, uh, after that, my, the next thing I could think of was I need to find another job, you know, because once you just get married, you're not thinking about, let, let me try this for myself. It's like, then I, I, I haven't found myself yet. So my identity was still tied to, I can work for somebody and produce. You know, the reason I got that job was because I said, hey, I'm getting married. You know, I was like, I plan on proposing to my girlfriend and get married soon. So, you know, I need to make some more money and I know I can produce for you guys. So I took that job with the sole purpose of, hey, I need to make money to take care of my wife. So when they let me go, my first instinct was I need to find another, find another job so I can take care of my wife. So the next step was just filling out job applications and end up getting uh, I applied for a sales manager job at a gym that was kind of way underpaid me, but the boss was cool. I still can say I'm a good friend today. But we're at the gym and he's pretty much sold on me during the interview. So he's giving me a tour around the gym and mid interview. I take my phone out and I go on Instagram and start promoting the gym on the job interview. He goes, you good with social media marketing? I was like, I know a thing or two. He's like, we need that for this gym. So he's like, so they hired me as a sales manager. Probably two, three weeks later, they made me the general manager. And my job was to help with their marketing uh, outside of general manager posi uh, position type roles. So I bought a course online, start studying, and I realized, hey, if I can do that for them, I can do this for myself. And then that started the, the journey of starting a marketing company. Mm. So I, I, I love it because both of those jobs, even though you didn't know, you know, why you got fired from the one job, you, you know, you went and got another job just because that's what you're supposed to do, especially you about to get married. You know, you want to make sure that you have a good wedding. You make sure that you guys are set up and you went to these jobs and you went to the second job and you just were doing what you know to do with the social media. And that's smart. That was like to do that in the middle of an interview. Like they like, hold on, wait a minute. You, oh, you know what you're doing? OK, I'm sure as soon as the interview was over, they had a discussion. But that led up to you going to study, going to get the information that you needed um to start your own thing because sometimes we just start our own thing which isn't a bad thing and we just started we don't know what the hell we doing and then it's like something happens that throws us off and then you stop but when you have the information of something throws you off you kind of you know you can still go on go on that horse you can still go on that ride because you know what to do or you know how to do it because you got the information so you went you researched you studied you, you got your stuff rolling so how did, what, how did you start off with just helping a couple people, just helping yourself? How did that, like, how did that go when you started your own marketing? Yeah. So actually, before I hit on that, I do want to hit on something else that I think could bring value to your audience. Because like you mentioned earlier, not everybody is a business owner, an entrepreneur. Um, if you guys are trying to get a job, be a go-getter. Because that guy, he told me, he's like, hey, you know, I can't make a decision to hire you today or uh, right now. 
He said, I got to look at some things, but you should hear from him by the end of the night, you know, because I got to, because he, he didn't live here locally. So he had to go back home, which is out of town in another city. So he's like, I got I to leave tomorrow morning. So you should hear from him from tonight one way or another. Well, by the end of the night, I didn't hear from him. So you know what happened? The next morning, I woke up, looked at my wife and said, hey, I haven't heard from him. Do you mind if I take a quick road trip? Because I was going to meet him out of town at his home gym. <laughs> so I woke up that morning and drove straight there, in which he ended up giving me a call. Because uh, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. His home is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So he gives me a call, gives me the job. He's like, all right, well, I got to get off the phone. I'm on the road to Winston-Salem right now. I say, how funny, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, I ain't hear from you. So I was going to just meet you there to talk to you. So, but I actually got there an hour before he did. But he was like, hey, when you get there, this is the manager in this location. Let him know you're my new manager. I want you to hop on the management call with him. So I get there, hop on that call. He talks to his boss, and this is the VP's boss. He talks to him. He goes, hey, Zach, I think you just found your guy. So yeah. so for everybody looking to get a job, definitely, like, be a go-getter. Go all out. Like, be what a real go-getter is. Don't do the minimums. But as far as starting out with the clients, the operations manager there, I told him I want to start a social media marketing company. He's like, hey, you know, I actually used to own one. I'm like, really? So I just start asking him questions too. You know, how'd you get started? What's this process like? How do you get results for this? You know, what type of strategies? And I'm just picking his brain. And then I'm like, bro, we should go into business together. He's like, no, I'll never go back into <laughs> that, that business. I'm like, why not? And he's telling me all the downs. I'm like, I don't care about that. You should still be my business partner. He's like, no. So then like a week goes by. I'm like, bro, you should be my business partner. He's like, no. And I did that for about three weeks. And eventually he broke down and we became business partners. And that's when we launched Elite Minds Marketing. Mm. I, I, well, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go back to the go-getter when it comes to getting a job. So my, my mans didn't just, you know, wait for the call. He said, hold on. My mans ain't calling me by the end of the night. Hey, honey, I'll be back. I'm about to take a road trip. There's not too many people that are going to take that road trip. It's probably like a 1%, and that what makes you different. You're one percenter. To go get on the road, meet the guy there. Even if he wouldn't have called you, you would have been there like, hey, what's up, my man? Okay. Um, you didn't call. So I'm here. And that would have, you know, he could have forgot whatever the case may be, but it just changed from you telling him, I'm going to meet you at the gym. You didn't call me, and you took the initiative and a lot of people, when it comes to getting a job, when it comes to doing anything, you got to take the initiative for yourself. Because once you show that you're really in, that shows that you're in. Like you're driving an hour, you got your gas. That's not, you know, gas ain't what it is right now today. But I'm sure gas was high. You taking a road trip an hour out of town and you're there like, hey, what's up? I'm here. I'm in your face. Uh, I really want this job. And that just shows that you really want it. And mm -hmm. that's what we got to do in life is show whoever that person is or whatever that thing is that you really want it. But another thing that you did, you, you know, you found somebody that had a company that was like the company you want to start and you start asking questions. Sometimes we don't ask questions because, oh, that's, that's a dumb question. No question is dumb ask the questions because that person that's in that position, they were in your position at some point and they had to ask somebody questions and you were just kept asking. And then you, you're, you're very persistent because you said you did it for three weeks and then he's like, all right, man, I, all right, I, let, let's go, let's do the business. So you ask questions, you took the initiative and then you were just persistent on kept asking the guy, let's, let's, let's do a business together. Let's do a business together. I, I love that because I'm persistent when it when it comes to things that I that I want. Like I'm gonna be persistent on it because I know if I'm not, then you're not gonna get it. And that's just like anything that you want to do in life, you gotta be consistent, but persistent too, because if you don't, then it's gonna show that person or that thing that you don't really want it. So right. you you got your you got your business rolling. Mm -hmm. Um how did that go? Are you making money out the gates? Are you meeting your goals? Or is it is it slow rolling? Oh, man, getting started. We were making nothing. <laughs> we were doing nothing. It was scary, actually. Um, we, we weren't making any money. Um, 
and I end up just, I'm at the beach with my wife and I see this ad for this dude that in his coaching program. And I'm like, oh man, this look great. I can retail off the rip. I can't afford it. I should have made a move because by the time I did make a move, you got less and it cost double. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually I made that move and I was like, I don't have $5,000 to invest. I'm, I'm broke as a joke, you know. I'm going to church and people are like, yo, you can put money in the, the collection plate? I'm like, bro, I've been sleeping. I can't even afford to pay attention. I'm so <laughs> Like, I have nothing. But uh, I was like, all right, well, I'm I'm just gonna go off on faith and I'm gonna I'm gonna finance it. I'm gonna get some debt. You know, I'm I'm gonna gamble on myself. Paid this guy five thousand dollars to coach me and it, it changed my business, it changed my life. Um one, it opened up doors to so many connections to other people in this coaching program. I was able to just lean from his experience, a dude who was, you know, right after getting his program, a couple months later, I went and saw him at a mastermind. It's uh, July 4th. So I signed up in June and it was July 4th weekend or whenever July 4th was. And I'm hanging out with him at this mansion. And like, he's not working like the whole, like, I mean, he's not doing any sales calls or anything like that. So I go to him, a dude named JR. I say, JR, bro, I need some inspiration. Like, let me see your Stripe account. I want to see how much money you made. And I'm just joking around with him. He's like, yeah, you want to see it? So he opens up the account, and he had made $8,000 already that day. By the end of the day, he had made $16,000 doing nothing but hanging out with us and shooting fireworks. So I'm like, this dude knows this stuff. Whatever he tells me I need to do, I'm going to do it. I'm going to apply it. And then from there, business starts to skyrocket. Man, I, I love it because where I'm from, I'm from a small town, Michigan City, um, and even in Indianapolis, like a lot of people don't know what a coach in program is or a life coach or a business coach or whatever kind of coach. And those having a coach or being just in a community, it changes your perspective on everything. Because like you said, it opened doors. You're meeting people that have the same mindset as you that are going after the same things that you're going after. And it might be you got marketing, somebody else might got something else and you guys bounce off each other and get information. And then you, what, man, you just, you, you the type of dude, I'm going to just ask the question see what they say. Cause the worst thing that can happen when you ask a question, they can say, no, I mean, exactly. it's not going to kill you, but you asked them how much money he made. And then he told you, and then at the end of the day, he made 16 racks, 16, just, just chilling, just chilling with y'all. Just chilling. Just, hold on. How did you do that? Let me ask these. Oh, that's how you did it. Oh, that's what I need to do. And you did. Cause I've been in coaching programs and the last one that I was in, I was doing, I, I noticed when I was doing this stuff, I was getting results. But then when I started slacking, I wasn't getting the results. And it's like, you could be in a coaching program. You could have a mentor. You could have all these things, have all the information. But if you don't put in the action behind it, you won't get anywhere. It'd be like, oh, you, you could be one of them smart people. Uh, like, on, remember on Kanye West's first album, the dude was like, yeah, I got all these degrees. But you was broke. He, was, he wasn't doing nothing. All he left his son was degrees. And it's like, you could be all this smart. You could know the Bible well. You could read a thousand books, but you ain't done nothing with it, and you're in the same position. So it's like, yeah. once you get information, implement that information. Implement it, because I, I, obviously, I'm not just saying this, and he's not saying this. He's showing what he's done. He's asking the questions. He's getting the information and then he's implementing that information. So after you got that information from your guy that's making 16,000 a day, just that day, he, I'm sure he probably made more throughout every other day, but you know, he made a light 16. So you start mm -hmm. doing the work that, that he said and what happened? Did, did you get a drastic change or, you know, you just seen small changes? Like what happened for you? It was just small changes little by little as I started to really learn, um, which was cool because the first real, real client I got came from uh, an ad. He taught me how to run the ads. 
Lee came in, and I'm like, crap, I got this dude, you know, but I don't know how to get results for this guy. I don't know what to talk to him about. Like, and I talked to another dude in the program who I still talk to on a consistent basis. He had a, he was one of my competitors, same niche, same marketing, exact same strategies, everything. And I'm like, bro, I need some help. He's a competitor in the program. And he's like, yeah, bro, I got you. He hopped on a sales call with me. He broke the thing down for the client. And he was like, yeah, bro, like, you know, this is how much I charge. It's like, why? Well, I didn't tell him I was charging that much. And he's like, all right, well, for you, man, just whatever you charge him, just give me a piece. I'll run the whole campaign. I'll teach you how to do it all. Make sure your client gets results and make sure you make some money. I'm like, bro, bet. And it's crazy because so many people get caught in the, the competition and they don't realize that it's no longer the that uh, era of competition. It's now the era of cooperation. The more you cooperate with people, the faster you're going to grow. So now I don't compete with people in my watch. If people want to compete with me and don't want to cooperate, that's a whole other story. I'll put you out of business. But <laughs> But I'm going to try to cooperate with people, and we, we can all eat. Mm, man, I, I I love that because you said you started off small, brick by brick, and then you were honest with yourself. I don't I don't know how to make results. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Let me go ask the competitor, somebody that's rolling, somebody that's already you know grooving, knowing what they do. And one thing I've got from you is ask questions it don't matter who it is if there's somebody in your field ask questions because sometimes you you know you could have got a, a stickler he could have been like man i ain't helping you out no nah, because i help you out now nah, you learn and you might move me out the way no nah, he's like oh i got you just give me you know i'm gonna add value to you you add value to my bank account mm -hmm. and you know we go that way and sometimes because he added value to you now that you can make more money but you just added you know you just gave him a little percentage and he was cool with it. People don't get you got to add value in different ways. Like you can't just always uh, think you're going to just add value and then nobody else is or somebody be like, oh, yeah, I want to work with you. I want to I want to do this. What can you do for me? How can you help me out? And he was able to do that. And I love what you said is uh, what you say is not the era of competition. It's the era of cooperation, cooperation, cooperation. Yep, and collaboration. Yeah, in collaboration. And I think a lot of people are doing that now. It's like you connect with somebody else and they connect with you. Now y'all making millions of dollars or y'all y'all bag got bigger just because y'all work together. Now you, you're seeing stuff and everybody eats. It's just like uh, the movie. It's just like paid in full. If you work with everybody, if everybody handles what they're supposed to, everybody can eat rather than, oh, I'm, I'm going to hate on him or don't work with him or don't work with her. It's like, no, nah, we all can eat. Like it's enough money in the world where everybody can eat. It's, yeah. it's, it's, they, they print this money all the time and the money ain't going to stop. So you, you get your first client, you got, you know, your man's help you out. Do you still need help after that? Or did you figure it out? Um, it was a progressive thing for both of us. Because we were both big and how do we get the best results? How do we be the best? So it got to a point where we both were able to figure out getting better and better results. And uh, excuse me, he actually, uh, he was able to up his price. He became a really pricey person. This one we're both uh, marketing ex uh, exclusively in the real estate niche, doing marketing for realtors. He upped his price and he became a higher ticket person. And he had a set price that he would charge people for the full year. And then I was charging a thousand dollars more than that for three months. So we both found our little niches in there and our price points, but we were both able to eat consistently. And then we both found, I didn't realize at the time, I found there was one guy who had a system who got even better results than I did. So I went to that guy and I'm like, Hey, I'll pay you $2,500. If you teach me what you uh, how you're doing this and just give me your SOPs. So he's like, yeah, I do that. Him, he had his team hop on with my team. They trained us on all their SOPs. We're able to implement it and get great results. And then I'm talking to another one of our friends. I'm like, yeah, I'm talking to such and such. And uh, I just paid him $2,500 for all his SOPs. And then 
He's like, oh, yeah, that's the same. So Yash is the guy that was helping me. He's like, yeah, Yash just bought their company out. So right after I paid him for the SOPs, my buddy went and bought their whole company. <laughs> so yeah. like, oh, man, so I guess now we're going to be getting the same results. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's funny. But again, again, you ask questions. And now that you made that investment on yourself, you know, you made some money, you were able to, hey, I'm, I, got, I got this amount for you. I just need, I just need to know what you know. And that's how you, like, through the whole time you ask questions. And you ask questions that maybe sometimes, like, to people that somebody else might have been in your position, they wouldn't have asked those questions. Or mm -hmm. they wouldn't have done the thing. You, like, you, you're an outside-the-box guy. Like, you're asking questions outside the box. You're going traveling just for an interview to get the job. Like, you're doing outside-the-box stuff. So you're doing your real estate. How long do you stay in the real estate marketing? And, like, when did the switch? Like, when did it switch? Like, the click? Like, mm, let's let's do something else. Um, I was in that, uh, that niche for two years. Switched last year, actually, when my business partner was like, hey, I'm done. Um. He just got burnt out, which it was really heavy on, on him as far as the, uh, the back end of what he had to handle. Um, and I, I'm a type that I'm aggressively expanding. Like people see our company make money and they think, oh, man, like you guys are rolling in the dough. But I'm like, nah, I don't care about the profits right now. Like give me enough to take care of you know, me and mine. But the rest is going to be invested into my team growing the team, having more people so I can always produce, having better people so we can produce better, going to other people and saying, hey, let me pay you to teach me how you're doing this. How are you getting these results? So he's like, yo, we're doing a lot of work and we ain't making that much money. So he working a job on the side because a lot of times I'm like, hey, I'm about to invest 100% of our profits plus into doing this, into doing that to grow the company, which was great. We were able to grow the company. We got endorsed by Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank. Um, we were featured in Fox, um, ABC, CBS, like we, we or NBC, one of those things. We were featured in multiple, multiple, multiple news outlets. So we were able to grow fast. It just, it burned him out. But, you know, like you were talking about before, though, on the hit on, it's just asking questions. Um, everybody listening, you're going to live at the level of the questions you ask. So I'm always asking questions, even from my clients, my customers. I'm like, hey, you know, how, how do you like the results you're getting? What's your experience like? And just taking that feedback. That's why we kept getting better and better. We started off I'm like, hey, I'm going to manage your social media posts. And people would pay us a certain amount. We would do that. And it would increase their brand presence if someone looked them up. But the organic reach wasn't there on Facebook and Instagram anymore. So they weren't getting any business from it. You know, long term, they might if people discover them because everything's built out, but they weren't getting business. And I didn't feel comfortable with people paying me and not making money. My company's philosophy is if we can't make you money, we don't deserve your money. So from there, I was like, well, how can we get them more business? So I found out, oh, I can run a Facebook ad and I can have leads coming in. So we did that. And then it was like, great. Um, these these uh, leads are expensive though. So I was like, all right, well, how can we create even better ads to get the cheap, uh, cost of the leads down? So we figured that out. And now we're able to get people a lot of leads cheap. And they're like, great, but these leads suck. So I'm like, all right, the leads probably don't suck. It's probably the realtor. But how can I take responsibility for the fact that the leads aren't converting better? So to make sure the leads didn't suck, I figured out how to run ads to get, if you're a realtor and your lead came in, we got their name, their phone number, their email um, if they currently rent or own their house and their time frame for moving. So the realtor could look at the lead and say, oh, wow, like, all right, this is a legit lead. They own a house. They're looking to move within three months, which means this is going to be two deals because I can help them sell their house and buy a house. You now, one of our clients did that and made $18,000 his first month of working with us. So I'm like, great. Now we're, we got our lead quality up. But then some people still weren't converting. So I was like, all right, well, that's probably on the realtor. So instead of blaming them, how do I take responsibility for it? So then we start building out courses, teaching the realtors how to call the leads, how to book the sales calls, how to close the deals. So we, on their end, they could be more efficient, which increased the results. But then it still wasn't up to par because they didn't want to do all the work. So I was like, all right, well, instead of blaming the realtor, 
how do I, how do we make this better? So when I bought the guys SOPs, it's because we basically built out our own call center where when the leads came in, we called the leads, qualified the leads. And if the leads qualified, then we would book appointments on the realtor's calendars for them. So it was so done for you, which our prices went up, but we had a service that pretty much guaranteed you were going to close deals and make money. And we wouldn't have got all that without getting the feedback from the client and figuring out, hey, what's wrong here? So the questions are huge. Mm. You said you live at the questions that you ask. And that is so true because I think sometimes we're scared to ask questions and it's like, don't be scared to ask questions. Like I'm one, I'm one person that asks questions. Like say if I got into it with someone and I'm like, okay, was I wrong? Let me ask somebody that's going to give me an honest opinion. Was I wrong or, you know, how can I fix this? Cause I never want to leave a situation where it could have been on me and I didn't fix it um, per se. Mm -hmm. So, or just even at work, I'm an educator. I didn't go to school to be an educator. I didn't do anything. I didn't even like school. So it's like, mm -hmm. I have to ask questions to see how other people, this, you know, you've been working here 20 years. Let me ask you how you've been, how, how, how you made it 20 years and what are, what are you doing in your class? So then I can implement it in my own way and, you know, do that. But you said uh, you can't take you can't if they can't make money, we don't deserve to take their money. And That's a right. lot of people don't have that. Some people be like, well, you signed up for the program. Uh, I got my money and you rolling. And you understood that you had to serve your customers, your clients, because if you did, and you made them money. You're going to make yourself more money instead of just making money off them. And they're not making it because they're going to be like, well, I mean, they, they got the ads, but I ain't really make nothing. So, I mean, you can go over there and, you know, people will know who you are, but you kept and you asked for feedback. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important to ask for feedback because you're going to get and you got to ask the right people, though, or you, like you asked your clients. But if you're whatever you're doing and you're doing and you want feedback, ask somebody that's going to give you honesty. Don't ask somebody, oh, yeah, man, that's, that's cool and it's ugly. Or you, you know, you might got the friend, your outfit trash, and they like, oh yeah, girl, that look good. And you go out and you ain't get nobody number, ain't nobody come up and talk to you. And you like, what why why not? Because your outfit was trash. You didn't ask the right friend. Hmm. And <laughs> you said one one of the things, instead of blaming others, you took responsibility. Yeah. Every time you figured out something, you like, well, this worked, but that ain't working. Ah, okay, it ain't maybe it ain't them. Let me see what I can do on my end. So it sounds because because I know um, what you do. So that sounds like that real estate helped you for the next level that you went to. Like you st said, you started uh, last year. So mm -hmm. when you transfer from real estate to e-commerce, was it a big difference or was it like, OK, I, you know, I can just implement these systems and these um, things over here and it's going to help me. How did that go? That transition when you went from real estate to e-commerce? Yeah, the transition was crazy because it required a new level of me. So mm. this time, I actually ended up paying $15,000 in the coaching for three months of coaching because I learned with real estate, it's copy and paste. I could take on a client. I had the systems. There's five ads I can run. I run this ad. When this one stops working, I switch to this one. That one stops working, I switch to this one. And then I just rinse and repeat. Um, every single client was the same, no matter where they were. The ads were different. <clears throat> Ecom, there is no copy and paste. You have to have skills. You have to know exactly if you want to get the results we're getting for our clients anyway. You know, we've done over 10 million in client revenue in the past little bit. So we have clients that, you know, we, we scale to multiple, 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 multiple six figures, almost seven figures in a month. <laughs> so to get those type of results, you got to have real skills. You have to have a deeper understanding of the marketing process, the whole sales process, buyer psychology. So now, like, I even do consult, uh, consultations from time to time. i um, very picky on the clients I take for that. But I can break down the psychology of every bit of their sales process and their marketing and show them the hidden gaps and how they can increase their conversions. But it requires way more skill and know-how and finesse than it did with real estate marketing. Mm. Um, so um, 
I wish I had the little, I always say that I'm going to get the machine that has a little noise. So you just going to say, oh, we made 10, the Kevin Hart, you're not just going to run past this. So you going, you said, when did you start the, um, the e-commerce again? It's been about six months. <laughs> and you made how, how much you say? We've done 10 million in client revenue. So, so um, yeah, you're not just going to run past that. Like you said, oh yeah, we made 10 million in a little time frame. You, you, and you made seven figures in in a month at uh, certain times. But what started that fifteen thousand in coaching? Yeah. And you have to invest in yourself. And I'm learning that. And like you said earlier, sometimes you might got to put yourself in debt. You you know because you're taking a risk. And when you're taking a risk and you're paying for something like that, when you're paying $15,000 for three months, you're not just going, oh, well, I signed up with such and such. Yeah, he's my coach. No, you're going to put in the work because you're like, hold on, this is $15,000. That's not just some chump change. Uh, that's not just, you know, some money you throw around and say, oh, I'm in this coaching program, but you're not getting results. You – went from 5000 to 15000 and I'm sure um, your bank account went with it and it went higher because you made over $10 million in this short time frame. Like you just- And client like, revenue, not not, and client, not, not yeah. you, but yeah, you know, clients collectively make $10 million. Yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm sure you, you, you got a bag somewhere in there. Like you don't <laughs> just run past like you don't got a bag. It might not be the $10 because that's the client's revenue, but you know how to get results now. And it's funny because I'm listening and I'm remembering everything. You started off with a company. You helped them make a million dollars. Then you went to another company and you did the social media. You did the marketing. And then, you know, you partnered up with somebody. You ran something else. And now you're starting something new where you said you had to have skills. Because everything you just said, just a typical marketing person is not going to know that. Somebody that, oh, I know some marketing. You're not going to know everything you just said. So you had to study. And, and a lot of the things, it, it goes back to ask questions. I think that might be the title of this, ask questions. <laughs> like, yeah, like you ask questions to get you there. And so now you got your business. You say you sometimes do um, consultation. Um, where um, do you want to take your business? Like you don't have to tell like, detail but where where do you see your business going because you only been running it for six months and you're getting your clients a bag like off of that so where do you see your business going yeah um there's a bigger bigger play uh that's coming uh which i can run by you offline okay but, um but yeah and this is uh i see this business going to 10 million in 2023 um it'll definitely cross uh eight figures um, in 2023, uh, if I can do it this year, that'd be phenomenal. Not quite sure. Just being realistic if that will happen, but I'm also going to launch an e-com store. Uh, we're going to do a big promotion around it and I'm going to try to scale that to seven figures in 90 days. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And then after that, I have another business we're launching that I'm fairly certain will hit eight figures in this first year or year and a half rather. Mm. Um. Yeah. You. You. You talking big. Big money. Eight figures. Six figures. Because I mean, so, you know, you said seven and eight. And and, yeah. In the first, within the first year and a half. And I love that. And I love talking to people that talk that talk when it comes to business. Like, because if you're not talking to somebody that's making where you want to be someday or where you want to get to, then you're not going to be able to get to. You got to ask those those questions like you've done. And I'm sure I'm going to ask a couple questions offline. Cause I, you know, I just like to ask questions and it's just, I, I love it. I love hearing that you got these different businesses that you want to do and you have time frames on them. Cause sometimes we have goals, we have dreams, we have things that we want, but we don't have a time frame on it. Oh, well, I want to do this. Okay. By when? Do you know the date? Do you know, you know, and I had to realize that when I first started in business and doing entrepreneurial stuff, like when you write something down or have a goal and you put a date next to it, mm -hmm. you're going to, you're going to accomplish that more than that you're just saying, uh, oh, I'm going to, you know, about it, you know, well, I want to make $5 million. Okay. When do you want to make that by? 
because when you make it by when you put that date on there, it's like, okay, all right, I'm at two five. I got uh I got three months left. Am I gonna make that goal? Okay, you maybe not make that goal, but you still go after it like you wanna make the goal because you're gonna learn something in there. And I just love that, man. So uh people that are maybe they're a marketer, maybe they're an e-com, uh, what are three tips you can give someone right now that they can, you know, go home after they listen to this, take their notes and be able to apply. Awesome. Um, all right. I'm going to give, I'm going to give you guys one quick bonus and I'm going to think of three tips that I can give you. The, the bonus tip is just pay me to take care of it for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, three tips, I would say one, Invest, 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 invest into the business, invest into your knowledge, invest into the uh, relationships. That's a big thing for me now is I write it down and read it every day on my goals. And I call it my eight figure identity. Um, invest into your relationships, pay to meet people in the network and to build those connections. Invest, invest, invest. If you want to invest into yourself and your business, no one else will. Um, so that's first and foremost, no matter what the investment is, make it like I'm looking at joining $155,000 mastermind here soon. Like invest. Um, <laughs> the second thing would be is uh, work on your mindset um, and put a huge, huge focus on your mindset. Uh, not just from like investing in the coaching and stuff like that, but making sure your thinking is on point, making sure you stay positive. All success comes in the form of a positive mental attitude. You want to make sure that you get the dot process of successful people. Read books. Um, back just in January, that one month alone, I read ten books. Like you want to, you want to read and build yourself up because you're never going to outgrow your self image. You're never going to outgrow your level of thinking. And then we talked about asking questions this whole time. If you don't know the right questions to ask, it's going to be hard to progress in life. The better your thinking gets, the better the questions you'll ask. Um, if you guys want to read a good book, uh, John Mac, Dr. John, Mac, Dr. John C. Maxwell, um, he wrote a book called good leaders ask great questions. Um, so definitely peep that. And just the third tip, if I have to give one would be, man, if I had to get one other tip, cause I feel like all of them are the exact same, honestly, but just focus on being the person that's going to get you the life you want is be, do, have in that order. You have to be the person that, uh, that'll do the things that'll get you the things that you want. So you actually have the things you want. Be, do, have. If you become the person, then you will naturally do the things. And if you do the things, you'll have the things you want. So your, your biggest part of your being, uh, of your identity is in who you are. You're a human being. You're not a human doing. You're not a human having. You're a human being. So if you just focus on growing you and being the person, that's why I say I have an eight-figure identity. I have a list of things eight-figure people do, and I look at that every single day so that way I know I'm programming myself to have the same traits as these eight-figure people. So I know if I become that eight-figure person, I'm going to do what those eight-figure people uh, do, and I'll have what these eight-figure people have. Is be, do, have in that order. You can't shortcut it. So, yeah, those would be my tips. I love it. First tip he said, he basically just told y'all, just pay him and he'll get you together. Mm -hmm. But invest. And the important one, I mean, invest in yourself, but invest in relationships. I don't think people understand that enough to where you invest in relationships. Because sometimes you're in relationships and they're toxic or it's a relationship that's not going anywhere. That relationship is, isn't going anywhere. You're not investing in that relationship to take it anywhere. Then you say work on your mindset. That's a big thing. Your mind, like it, if you control your mind, you control your life. And like you said, uh, ask questions. But you said good leaders ask good. Um, what's it? What you say? Good leaders ask great questions. Good leaders ask great questions by uh, John C. Maxwell. I mm -hmm. think I've looked at that book um, or something on him with um, leadership. And then the last mm -hmm. one you said, be, do, have. You got to know who you who you are. If you don't know who you are, if you don't understand your purpose, if you don't understand yourself, you're not going to get too far. 
I don't care what you think, what kind of skills you got, all that. If you don't know who you are, because you'll go for anything. If you don't know your core values, your beliefs, those things, you'll go for anything. Somebody will throw some money in your face and be like, oh, okay, I'm going to do it. But that's they're a seisty person. That's one thing I um, love about what you said earlier. Like, if you're not making anybody else money, we're not, you know, no reason for you to give us more money or anything of that sort if I can't make you money and you figured it out how to make people money obviously you mm -hmm. I, you got the results you got the receipts uh, and I'm a walking I, lottery yeah yeah and, and it sounds like it because um the kind of conversations that that you you had that we're having and just the numbers that you're saying a lot of people don't have those type of conversations with people with those numbers it might be a little smaller like I can't wait to the day I'm making six, seven figures, eight figures in a day or in a month. Like, I don't look at that like that's crazy. Like mm -hmm. some people be like, man, you ain't going to, you might not have someday, long as God let me live on this earth to that time, I'm going to get it. And like, people don't have those type of goals. They have, oh, I want to make, you know, that amount of money in a year. It's possible to make it in a month. And yep. sometimes it's possible to make it in a day, just depending on what you do. True. Um, the only reason someone makes $100,000 a year is because they don't realize they can make $100,000 a month. <laughs> Man, talk that talk. So uh, before we get out of here, before you drop how people can reach out to you, um, give them an underdog quote, something that they can take away um, cause you've dropped a lot of gems. You said a lot of things without even, you know, just telling your story, just, you've been able to drop enough knowledge, but give us a quote. Um, one from an underdog perspective or like my favorite quote, clarify. No, under, uh, underdog perspective. Cause you know, everybody starts at an underdog. Everybody starts somewhere where, you know, they feel like they can get somewhere. They just, it's like, I, I don't know. You know, they don't, they don't know how to get there. Awesome. So if you guys listening, if you're driving, pull the car over. If you're seated, make sure you got a pen and paper to write this down. Because this one quote can shift your mindset and change your life. Um, and all underdogs understand this. And whether they stay an underdog or not is solely dependent on how they apply this quote. And the quote is, Successful people are influenced by the desire for pleasing results. Failures are influenced by the desire for pleasing activities. And that's huge if you understand that. Because if you listen to my story, the going, being known, being those uncomfortable positions to ask those questions, driving out of town to meet somebody, to get the job interview, like those aren't pleasing activities. They're not fun. They're uncomfortable. But the results are what I wanted. So successful people are influenced by those results. Failures think specifically about the activities. Oh, I don't want to do that. Uh, no, nah, I'm cool. But nah, I don't want to do sales. I don't want to talk in front of crowds. Oh, I don't want to do it in a podcast. I don't want to post on social media. I don't want people seeing me. Successful people don't care about the activity. They're just going to do it anyway because they want the results. <laughs> uh if you had a mic, you could just drop the mic. Um, I would just tell people how to reach you, and we would just end it there. Because it's, it's, it's simple. It's about results. It's about going after the results that you you want. And like you said, you got to do uncomfortable stuff. Like you you got to be – you got to have uncomfortable conversations. You got to be around people – that's making the money that you want to make, even though you could be not making that money, not even close to making that money. But if you're around those people and you're asking those questions, obviously they got the answers to get you results. There's no point of asking people questions just to do activity hmm. because what's the point? You could, you could go on YouTube and, and see what somebody's doing and just do what they do. And, you know, if you want it that way, but, it's because you're taking time out of that person's day. If somebody's wealthy, if somebody's making this kind of money, they're on a schedule. And if they take time out their day to answer your questions or just have a conversation with you, they mean, that means they value who you are and you need to value that they took the time out of their day 
to give you that information and then go and then go get it. And I'm talking to myself. I ain't even talking to nobody else because I've been in situations where I've been around people and I've asked questions and I've kind of done it and then I stop. It's all about consistency um, to get those results because you can have activity. You could post twice a week and be like, oh, yeah, I'm posting. I'm on social media. You have no results. So it's no point to even tell people what you're doing unless you got results because all people care about is results. If you don't got results, you can't have receipts. And if you don't got receipts, it means you didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, and I'm glad you talked about having that value for the uh, information people give you because I learned a, a big lesson from one of my buddies who taught me a lot, actually. I paid $1,500 for his mastermind. Actually, I didn't pay that much. I got a discount. But <laughs> but he said he went to a guy who had the results that he wanted, and he was like, hey, I'll pay you $1,000 for an hour of your time if you just answer some questions for me. And the guy's like, nah, bro, we're friends. Like, you don't have to pay me. And then he looked at him and said, no, if I don't pay you, I won't value the information. So he paid him $1,000. The dude told him, uh, he answered his questions for him. And then that dude took his business from zero to $80,000 a month within the next nine months at 20 years old. Because mm. he because he understood value. Yep. Because he didn't have anything really to give value-wise, knowledge-wise, that could really help the other person get results. But he had money. He had a little cash. Hey, I, I, I know you my homie, but here – this is just just because and it was because if he didn't give him anything, he wouldn't have done it like you. Like I've done a lot of different free stuff and it's like, oh, OK, it's good information. You really ain't. Sometimes you don't really get the information you need to um, to scale up anyways. You get just enough information to kind of get you on the on the boat to start uh, pedaling. But you're not going to get, you know, to the end off of that free but if you're paying somebody it's like okay this i'm paying this person why am i paying this person and i'm not doing anything with it so no. you're going to pay the person to either do it or you're going to pay the person and just put money in their pocket exactly and then i went to that same kid later i want to call him a kid because i still look up to him um and his new business is projected to do 100 million dollars in the next few years but i went to him i was like bro I just need an hour of your time. He's like, all right, we can set something up. I'm like, all right, I'm going to pay you $1,500 for your time, though. He's like, nah, you don't have to do that. I was like, nah, you remember the story you told me about you doing that? I want to do the same with you because I value your time. And he was just so touched from that. He was like, bro, it's just because of that. Like, I'm going to make sure you succeed. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and that's the thing. You can miss an opportunity by being – uh, your old ways because just I'm you know me from where I'm from it's like ah well, I'm gonna pay this person oh you my homie you're gonna give me and that's how you miss out on opportunities because you think that's your homie that's your friend you don't value them enough to just say hey bro I don't, I don't got much but here goes something just for your time uh, here you know this could be fifteen hundred dollars that could be you know something on gas or whatever the case may be because obviously that person is making enough money where fifteen hundred dollars ain't changing their bank account, okay. but it's it's able to do something for them or they're able to do something, maybe take the kids somewhere, but they're also able to help you. And I love that, man. I love that you you ask questions and you follow what the people said. You you even, and you ain't slick because you went up. He only paid the person a thousand. You paid him 1500. You ain't slick. You threw him an extra 500. You knew what to do. Here you go, buddy. Yeah, I remember you said you threw a thousand, but I'm gonna throw 15 just to, you know, just put the icing on the cake. And he like, oh, okay. Now I'm gonna make sure. He didn't say, oh, I'm gonna give you the information. He said, I'm gonna make sure I give you this information and, and you're gonna be successful. So I, I love that. Um, how can people reach out to you? Where can they go look at? Um, your work um let them know how they can get in touch with you yeah um if you want to hit me up on uh on facebook i'm on facebook jeremy funderburk uh if you look me up on linkedin same thing jeremy funderburk um if you want to hit me up on instagram at the real jeremy f uh if you want to hit me up on tiktok same thing at the real jeremy f 
or you can just go to instantscalemedia.com and uh, submit a form to, to talk. And yeah, I'm happy to help people out how, however I can. Appreciate it. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your knowledge. Um, and thank you again for being on the show. Uh, the honor privilege is all mine. And on that note, peace, one love. Man, I'm the underdog, I'm the underdog with the heroic heart. heart. I'm Eric Jones Jr. I have to keep pushing for my kids. If I give up, what's that leave them with? Nothing. I have to understand that it's bigger than me. That it's not about me when I wake up and go to work. It's not about me when I'm reading and educate myself. It's not about me when I'm practicing my speeches. It's not about me. It's about my family.